Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We speak the name of Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. We speak the name of Jesus, which is the name of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We honor you this morning, Lord. We give you thanks and glory. Lord, today we lift up so many requests for healing today. Father, we pray for Kathy Spleet. Lord, we pray as she's at the hospital, we pray, God, for a healing touch in her body. Lord, we pray, God, the surgery as it went well, we pray for an exponential healing, God, to take place in her body. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would relieve the pain in her legs, and God, that she would sense the healing touch, the healing balm of Jesus coming over her body this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray for Rhonda Garland. We pray, Lord. Lord, thank you that it was nothing serious. Thank you, Lord. It was only just a minor, minor touch, God, of, uh, of just uh, an issue that she had that, Lord, you brought healing to it. And Lord, thank you today. Lord, and I pray for safe travel, Lord, as they journey home these next four days. Father, we're asking today that you would have your hand upon Rhonda and Kevin as they journey home. Hallelujah. Lord, for so many others, God, that need the healing touch in their body, Lord, we continue to pray for Lisa. We continue to pray for Willie. We pray for Frank this morning. We pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you would have your hand upon them today. Lord, that you would bring healing to their bodies in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we do speak the name of Jesus, which is the name of life, the giver of life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, the opportunity that we have to gather as your family. Lift up the name of Jesus and celebrate your goodness. And Lord, as we look to your word this morning, God, we pray today, we pray, God, for your word to speak into our life. Help us to walk in the freshness and the anointing of your Holy Spirit. And we'll be sure to thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Thank you, worship team. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you guys to come back at the end of the service, and I want to do that song one more time. Uh, as we will close together in prayer. Amen. Praise God. If we could have our ushers come forward, we want to continue our time of, of uh, giving this morning with our tithes and offerings today. Amen. As you heard me mention this morning about Rhonda, um, this past week, uh, they were concerned. They thought there were symptoms there of a stroke. And Rhonda was at Baylor University Hospital. As you know, they were traveling to visit their daughter, Jen, and son-in-law, Chip. And while they were down there, Rhonda experienced extreme exhaustion. Well, thank the Lord it wasn't a stroke. It was a minor case of vertigo. And so um, they're going to take four days to come home. They're actually leaving Texas today. And uh, they'll be traveling and should be home later on in the week. So pray for their safety. Uh, as they travel home. Amen. Gentlemen, if you'll come, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Chris, would you ask a blessing on our offering? Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day of sunshine and blue skies. We thank you, Lord, we have seen in America as we go to church and of course we have a Bible we can read. So thank you for this message today that came to our head. Thank you for the church and all the people in it. All the believers said amen. Amen. Praise God. While well, we're taking up the offering this morning, as we are in the season of our wonderful state changing colors with the leaves and uh, the time of year upon us, I mean, it's like, where did 2023 go? Snap your fingers and it's gone, right? Well, uh, today we're going to be talking about, uh, over the next 
uh, th over this week and going into next week, we're talking about the most overlooked word that is in the Word of God. Thankful. And sometimes we take for granted of what we do give thanks for. So this morning, before we get into the Word, and which will lead us in our time collectively around the altar together as a church family at the close of the service, maybe there's a testimony you'd like to share this morning, something that the Holy Spirit, something that the Lord has done in your, in your life recently, and you'd like to share it and give God thanks for it this morning. Is there anyone? Please don't all jump at one time, okay? I don't want you to do that. All right, we got so many people waiting. Please. There's so many things to be thankful for, but it's hard to just go through just one, right? Um, and actually, I've been thinking a lot about that the last couple of weeks. Just being so thankful. Um, and even going back to the beginning of the year, that was one of my prayers is to have an attitude of gratitude going into this year. And just being thankful for not only great things that have ever happened in my life, but for the traumatic events, too, and all the, the bad things, um, you know, because all those moments have been opportunities and great ways to see in the Bible when there's difficulty that came across any one of the characters in the Bible. It, all, it always brought growth within them. Yeah. And um, so these lives that we live, all the good and all the bad and all the things that we're thankful for on a day-to-day basis, Having a house, having food in the fridge, all the things that we truly fully can be content, right? That's what you're supposed to do. Amen. That's what that's what it's about. Amen. Um, they all shape us and change us and, and help us with growth through life. So I'm just thankful for every single thing and every event that I have ever experienced with my almost 40 years here on earth that has helped me um, grow into a relationship with God, get to know Him better, and get to know people better as well. So I'm Praise just God. Just Amen. I, it's so hard to say one. It's just the whole thing. Yeah. Just do it again. So Praise I'm God. Thankful for all of it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's awesome. Praise God. Anybody else? You have a word of testimony. Yeah, Tom. Thanks for the freedom that we enjoy in this country. And I'm thankful for those men who stood up to protect that freedom. And this weekend as we celebrate Veterans Day. Yeah. And salute. Yeah, amen, brother. Amen. Praise God. We're very thankful for our veterans, and I know that we, we have several that are part of our congregation, and so thank you to those that have served our country and protected our freedoms, and we're very thankful for them in so many ways. Amen. Praise God. Anybody else? Do you have a word of testimony, something you want to... Praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's great to have our resident evangelist back in the house. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're so thankful for Willie. Amen. Praise God. How many want that kind of energy at 90, huh? Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Anybody else this morning? You want to give God thanks, something you want to thank the Lord for. Praise God. Anybody? I think I'd like to thank my parents. You don't realize until you get older how much they love you and what they still love. They raised me and they raised me yeah. and how much they taught me about. Yeah. Until you're a parent yourself, you don't realize how much they care about you. Amen. Yeah, that's a that's a good one there, brother. Amen. Uh, thankful for our parents. Uh, you know, we we had the opportunity four years ago when my parents moved back from Florida to, that they moved in uh, and we bought a house together and 
And uh, never in a million years, never, I honestly, never in a million years did I ever think that, you know, knowing what the Lord did in my life personally, did I ever see this coming down the road where um, I, I watch my own father before my very eyes, a guy who was so sharp, um, just full of wit, and just right before my own very eyes, I, I watch and see what's happening with his health. And I am very thankful for those moments that I get to spend with my, with my parents. And, uh, and uh, I got to tell you this, this story. It's, a, it's a, actually a really funny story. Um, for years, for years, um, and I remember when we were younger kids, uh, we had a dog. And um, my sister and I begged my parents for a dog. And my parents said, we'll go ahead and get you the dog. And you have to take care of it, though. Well, that lasted about a week, <laughs> you know? And uh, finally, my parents said, listen, we, we can't do this. We can't continue to take care. We worked, my dad was working two jobs, my mom was working two jobs, my sister and I were playing sports. And so, make a long story short, for years, my dad said, never again, I ever want to be a dog lover, ever again. <laughs> and you know who his best friend is? is Bella, his best friend. He loves Bella, and uh, every morning, Bella, she'll sit, she sits with my mom and I, because my mom and I drink coffee in the morning together. We watch the news together. Then my dad loves to sleep in. He wakes up at like 9, 9.30 now in the morning, and as soon as Bella starts to hear the rustling going on in the room, she jumps off the couch, runs to the room to make sure he's up, she pushes the door open and gives him a and makes sure he's up and stuff like that. And then she comes back in to report to my mom and I and waits for my dad to come. And my dad, every morning, he makes scrambled eggs and bacon. And Bella sits there at the stove and watches him make bacon and eggs. And, of course, she gets fed. You know, you know how that is. But it's just, you know, I'm really, you know, you bring that up, brother, because, you know, you're really thankful for your parents, you know. For years, they, they nurture and they groom you, they raise you. And we always said that if we had the ability and the capacity to take care of uh, our parents, we would do that. There was a period of time before Mary's dad went home to be with the Lord that we moved in and uh, lived with her father to take care of her dad. And uh, you just do those things. You know, they're, they're not inconveniences. They're, you just do them because that's what you're supposed to do. And so I'm very thankful for my parents, very thankful for that. Anybody else? Amen. Yeah, amen. Praise the Lord. If I'm going to tell you what's really huge in our fellowship is foster parenting. It's one of the big things in the Assemblies of God now. And in fact, uh, Stan Sunday, uh, you know, talking about parents that are foster parents in our fellowship. And Paul and Mindy are on this journey. And for sake of names, we won't list the kids' names but they are in the process of getting ready to foster a second young lady. And uh, she's just, uh, I'd gotten to know her this morning just for a minute and found out that she loves worship music and she plays instruments. So one day, you never know and stuff. So, um, but as a congregation, as Mindy mentioned, we, it does take a village. And we need to make sure that these kids are plugged in. Uh, we're going to the extreme and lengths right now of researching youth groups to make sure that we can get them connected to a good youth group. And uh, Mary and I are now going to assume the mantle of youth pastors again, uh, since I have all this free time in my life. 
And uh, so we're really excited about that um, because it does take a village. And we as a church have a responsibility to our kids that are in the church and to make sure that we guide them and lead them and bring constructive, wholesome, great values to them, all the way from kids' church, all the way to the youth. And uh, so, and it does, it takes a village. And so we surround uh, Paul and Mindy in, and this is, a, this is a ministry. This is because they love these kids. They love these kids and they're providing their forever home for them. And that is huge. That is huge. And we need to know that as they've entrusted us as their shepherds here at Victory Lane and as a congregation, that as they've, this is their home, that we are going to love these kids. Amen? We love all of our kids. And it takes a special person to foster children. It really does. And so know that you have a congregation that's standing with you uh, through this. And, um, uh, it, and yes, I do accept the challenge that he gave me to want to bowl me one-on-one -on -one any day of the week, buddy. Um, and so, no. But uh, <laughs> so praise God. Amen. Anybody else this morning? You want to give the Lord thanks? Yes. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. A rewarding work to, and sometimes some, it's the most underappreciated work, but to do what you do day in and day out to love those students is the only hope that they'll be able to see someday maybe in their life because our prayer is that they see Jesus through you. And we're thankful that you're part of our church family. We're very thankful for that. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Anybody else this morning want to give the Lord thanks for something today? Amen. Yeah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Thankful. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Don't want to miss anyone. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's right. Despising not the little things that the little ones do. Amen. Thankful for that. Hallelujah. Raising the children up in the way they should go. Amen. Giving them the opportunity to hear the gospel and to experience the love of Jesus Christ. And maybe the Lord, that's a good infomercial, sister. Maybe the Lord's leading you to, we want to be able to provide children's church for our kids on a regular basis every Sunday. Right now, we're only able to do it two Sundays a month because we, Kathy's down right now and stuff. So we have Rick and Jen, and then we have Ken and Debbie. And, but Debbie's been struggling with some health issues herself and needs some prayer. But maybe the Lord's laying that on your heart to be able to work with kids uh, in kids' church. And if that's something you desire that you would like to do, just see my wife for that. And we would love to be able to get you plugged in um, we, we have several kids that are in our church, but we'd like to provide that consistency for them on a regular basis. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Hey, big armies start small. Trust me, amen. Hallelujah. Just ask Gideon, huh? And what he ended up with at the end. Praise the Lord. Well, turn with me, if you will, to Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 20. And I have one verse that I want to be able to share with you this morning and help you to walk away with some of these truths. And I want to talk to you this morning about a thanksgiving to remember. And it, while you're turning there, whether you have a copy of God's Word or your electronic device, as we are just 11 days away from Thanksgiving, as we look at this Thanksgiving to remember, thank you should be the most used word in our English language that would be a standout as the most significant response to us as believers. Because we've been rescued by God, who gave us his only begotten son, that took upon the death penalty himself, and in 10 of his letters, Paul expressed thanks in those first chapters. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20, and I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. It says, And you will always give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, in the moments that we have today, would you allow the presence of your Holy Spirit to bring revelation to your word? Help us to walk in the freshness of being thankful every day. And we'll give you honor and praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to take a very practical and simple look at why Thanksgiving should be at the central focus of our lives. I want to be able to give us some takeaways that maybe you may not see, but you maybe have overlooked in your life, or what I would call spiritual nuggets of how we can walk in these truths in our everyday life. You know, it's so much easier to try to remain in a positive, optimistic, healthy attitude. Why? Because everything else brings about stress, turmoil, heartache. And you know what? When you really think about it, there's not much that we can do with that situation that the cards have been dealt to us the way they've been dealt. We have to try to work through it and be thankful for whatever the circumstance or situation is. I'd rather have a positive outlook than live the way that I used to look, live and have a negative outlook on something that I'm not going to have a hand in the outcome of it. <clears throat> I'd rather take the opportunity to be giving God thanks and say, Lord, you're going to work this out for your glory, and I'm going to trust that whatever the situation is, I'm going to be thankful for however it's going to happen. Why? Because there's always a lesson in everything that we can learn through Scripture. Always a lesson. You know, I heard a wise college professor say to us down at Cape Girardeau when I was a student at Teen Challenge, the Word of God can be like a medicine chest. It may not pertain to you today in what you're doing or what you're living or what that message may have been for you, but you can take it, put it in the medicine chest, and when you're sensing that you're off course or you're not feeling well, you can go back and pull that out of the medicine chest and apply it to your life and bring health to you. Think about that. We need, listen, God's given us 66 letters to live by. Amen? They're not fictional stories. They're real, everyday, practical truths of healthy biblical living and what it takes. And our simple responsibility is to make sure that we're feeding ourselves so that we're not starving ourselves. So the first thing I want to talk to you about with Thanksgiving, it's a barometer of spirit-filled living. That's the first thing. 
And Paul exhorted us to keep on being filled with the Spirit. If you look at Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18, just two verses before that, you'll see that where it says, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father, and be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. When you look at the spirit-filled life of a believer, it should direct us to always being giving thanks in every circumstance that we're in. You see, the basic indicator of approaching weather is barometric pressure. If it's rising, the forecast is generally going to be really pleasant. For the Christian, an attitude of thanksgiving is a clear indication of the degree to which one is being controlled and led by the Holy Spirit. So thanksgiving can be called the barometer of spirit-filled living. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to live as we would walk in the Spirit that we don't fulfill the lusts of the flesh, but we walk according to what the Spirit is telling us. Pride and arrogance, they are very inconsistent with thanksgiving. Inherit in the thanksgiving is an acknowledgement that we've done nothing to earn or deserve the blessings that the Lord's given us but rather to be eternally grateful for the many blessings that he has given us. And when we're thankful for the many blessings that God has given us, we can walk worthy in knowing that it's his Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us, gives us clear direction in how we should walk so that we know that whatever happens in our life, that we could still be giving God thanks for whatever the circumstance is because we don't have to live without Christ not knowing what the possibilities are or what the hope of our future is. Amen. And we need to understand that giving thanks to the Lord <coughs> becomes a lifestyle. It's not something that we should just say, well, it's that time of year and I need to be doing it. I need to allow this to become a lifestyle in everything that I do. When it becomes a lifestyle, and then I know that it's the barometer of a spirit-filled life, that God is receiving the glory no matter what I'm going through in my life, God is still going to get the praise because I know what the alternative was. I know what living without Jesus was going to produce. I know that what it was like not to give thanks and to always complain. I know what it was like to tear down bridges. I know what it was like not to live according to being thankful or grateful for the things that God has given me. And we need to be thankful for the many blessings He's given us. It's a story about a man who entered a monastery. Every year he was allowed to speak two words during the first three years. After the first year, he said to the committee, food's bad. When the second year passed, the man observed and went in front of the committee and said, bed's hard. And finally, when he earned the right to speak again in the third year, he said, I'm going home. The committee responded, well, I'm not surprised. Ever since you've been here the last three years, all you've done is complained. All it takes is one or two words to tear down a bridge, not to be thankful for it. Rather than to try to be negative or live negative or always trying to find the bad in a situation, why not try to be an optimist and say, what can God do with this situation that I could ultimately turn it around and say, you know what? 
I'm going to watch what God's going to do. And I'm simply going to give thanks no matter what the outcome is because I'm simply thankful to him because of what he's done in my life. You see, even though our complaining may seem infrequent, infrequent, we may be remembered for it. I don't want to be remembered for being a negative person and tearing people down and, 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 and thinking that there's no hope for anything. I don't want to be known for that. I'd rather be known for somebody that said, hey, no matter what the situation may be, listen, I'm going to give thanks for it. You know, every day, Mary and I, when we pray for our congregation, we always start off by saying we're thankful for the people that the Lord's given us. Why? Because it's you as the family of God that makes up the body of Christ that continues to push the church forward in everything we do. We often say that, that we often look at and say that I'm only going to be thankful if I have a certain number of people in the church. I don't see that anywhere in the Word of God. I don't see that in there. All I see is where two or three are gathered in the midst, he's there. And we simply have more than two or three. You really want to know the truth to my secret, to my recipe, to my flavor sauce, to my favorite sauce? <laughs> less people's less problems. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but you know, that's that's the truth though. When you think about it, when you think about it, it's not it's not the issue of the number of people. It's that when you look at this church, it's a family. We're the family of God making up the body of Christ, that we're collectively doing things to enhance the gospel and allow the Lord to be number one in our life because that's what we want to do. We want to make Jesus famous. The scripture exhorts us to be giving thanks to the Father. That's what Colossians chapter 1 tells us in verse number 12. I want to be giving thanks unto the Lord because of what he has done. Amen? There was that great song, that good chorus that we used to sing at Teen Challenge back in the day. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He healed my mind. He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise his name. Amen? The second thing that we see is that Thanksgiving is a beacon of spirit-directed living. In Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 13, Paul prayed that all Christians would be filled with the knowledge of God's will so they might conduct themselves in a manner that was pleasing to God. That is, number one, that we would bear fruit. And that every good work, it increases in the knowledge of God, being strengthened by the power, and by us giving thanks to God the Father in everything that we do. So what are beacons? Beacons, they help navigators stay on course. We too can be assured that, that in order to live for Christ, that our living is in line with God's will, and it is pleasing to the Lord, and that we're giving God thanks, and that is flowing from our life constantly. It's really easy to find a negative situation. It's really easy to, to look at a situation and be very negative about it. We just experienced it this past week. We saw what Ohio did. God help us. I saw people that were firing comments, believers, firing comments on Facebook using the words hate and way to go Ohio, you're taking us to hell. From Christians. From Christians. You better count to 100 before you post. That's what I always say. 
I always used to have this saying to my girls in volleyball, when in doubt, throw it out. When in doubt, throw it out. We can't do anything about it but pray. That's what we have to do. We have to pray. We need to pray that our, 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 Cong our Congress, the people that are there, we need to pray that our house and everything that's going on in Ohio, that they're going to get God's wisdom to be able in the next few weeks to put another amendment on the ballot. They have six weeks to do it. Six weeks. I don't know if you know that or not. If they, if they could come up with another amendment, they can post it, come up next year for November. We need to pray. Pray that the Lord will give wisdom to that house and how they would do it. But church, I'm going to tell you, we can complain until the cows come home about what happened in Ohio. But if we as a church did our job, then that's all we, that's all we could have done. We, could have, we prayed, we trusted the Lord for the result. We don't know what God's plan is, but we simply need to continue to pray. We need to pray. If you look at Luke chapter 17, if you'll turn there with me for just a moment, in Luke 17, and look at verse number 11 and following. Very familiar passage of scripture where Jesus healed the ten. And it says, Jesus continued on toward Jerusalem. He reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. As he entered a village there, ten lepers stood at a distance, crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on me. He took at them, here he looked at them, I'm sorry, he looked at them and said, Go show yourselves to the priest. And they went, their leprosy disappeared. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus shouting, praise God, I'm healed. <clears throat> he fell face down on the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. The man was a Samaritan, and Jesus said, didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? Does only the foreigner return to give glory to God? And Jesus said this to the man, Stand up and go. Your faith has made you well. The story of the ten lepers who called out to Jesus, Master, have mercy on us, is recorded in obedience to the Lord's instruction. You see, the lepers went to show themselves to the priests in Jerusalem, and as they, they went, they were healed but we only see that one Samaritan come back. And he fell down at his feet, giving thanks to him. But notice this. Jesus' response reveals why giving thanks is so important. Because through God, he is glorified. You see, we've been healed from a sickness that's worse than leprosy. It's the sickness of sin. Those that have been born again, those that have invited Christ into their life and have made Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior, we have been healed and set free from a life of death. Amen for that. And we need to always be giving God thanks for it. And in so doing, when we give glory to God our Father, Thanksgiving becomes a lifestyle, not just a word we use one time a year. Not just when we sit down with our families on the 23rd and break bread. It's something that we will be doing for the rest of our life. I'm going to ask if the worship team, if you'll come back to the platform this morning as we get ready to close this morning. As I mentioned to you earlier, I believe it would be very fitting for us as a church to collectively join together 
around the altar this morning. And as a symbol of us giving thanks, as we join hands around the altar this morning, we're giving thanks to the Lord our Savior for the cross. If it hadn't been for the cross of Jesus Christ, where would any of us be today? It is the biggest symbol, but the most productive part of a lifestyle as a believer, as a follower of Jesus would ever do, is to be giving thanks to Jesus for carrying the cross to Calvary for us. But giving God thanks for the great things that he has done. Knowing that as we go into this Thanksgiving season, that our words would be seasoned with life. They would be seasoned with salt. They would be seasoned with us being light to darkness this year. And to pray that as a body of believers, that those that don't know Jesus Christ, or maybe people that did know Christ, but have fallen away from the Lord, that this year would be the year of remembrance for them, that they either came back or surrendered their heart to Christ and said yes, to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of all. And it would be a season of remembrance for them. And so this morning, as we gather around this altar today, I want us to know that when we come forward, it becomes a sign, a symbol of knowing that when Jesus carried the cross to Calvary for us, that we were walking behind him in support of knowing that we were forever eternally thankful and grateful for what Jesus did for us on the cross. And today, it would be that symbol that when we come forward, that as we stand at this altar today, it becomes the place that where Jesus' final spot was, that as he carried the cross to Calvary, that we're standing in recognition of what he did for us, saying that as a body of believers today, we are saying thank you to Jesus Christ. And that this would become a life that we would live that would be pleasing and acceptable to the Lord. And I want us to be able to come to that place of knowing that as we go through that in our very life, that the master of the universe, our heavenly father, would look down on us and he would say, well done, well done. Because those are the words that we want to hear. So as the worship team plays this song, I want to speak the name of Jesus. I just want to invite you to come. And I want you to just, let's line this sanctuary, this front altar area, let's join hands together. And then at the end of this song, I'm going to close us in prayer collectively together. Amen. Praise God. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Just wanna speak. 
as we continue in this theme out of Luke 21, the story of the widow. You know, the story goes that as they were in the temple, they watched while all the rich people came by and dropped all their offering into the box. But then the story goes on to talk about the widow who dropped in her two pennies, everything that she owned, everything that she had. And Jesus paid her the highest compliment that he could ever pay. And next week, we will be looking at that. And I want to challenge you next week. As we come into the service, it's not just to say what we pour into the offering, but what are we pouring into the service? What are we pouring into that we're asking the Holy Spirit, Lord, what I want to, I want to be changed. There's an area in my life I desire that I want to just hang it up. I want to get rid of it. I want to be done with it. And you're willing to throw that into the offering box and willing to say, that's it, I'm done. What is it that is holding you up maybe from being forever grateful, forever thankful? Next week, we'll be looking at that question and we'll be looking at the response that Jesus gave her. And I trust that it'll be so moving for us that it'll bring us to a place that we understand and know that not just this season, but we're forever grateful for what the Holy Spirit is doing and is going to do in our life. When you look around this room and you're holding hands with, with that person on your left or your right, this is it. This is our church. This is our family. We are an army, but I believe that we're a sweet smelling aroma to the Lord and that he's pleased with who we are. Father, this morning, as we speak the name of Jesus, I think about this story of the widow and I think about how she poured everything she had to hear your response. And Lord, we speak the name of Jesus this morning over every situation that we face, over everything in life. And Father, we desire to know that as we come before you today, Thanksgiving becomes for us here at Victory Lane, it becomes life. It becomes a style of living that we're forever grateful for. That, Lord, we continue to build on the things that you've given us. The things that will lead us further into what you desire for us in our community. Allow us to be that beacon of light Allow us to be a storehouse full of blessing for those that need to hear the name of Jesus and we speak the name of Jesus for them today. And Lord, we'll be sure to thank you for it and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's give the Lord praise this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you as you go this morning. Amen. Greet one another in the name of the Lord. Amen. And we'll look forward to seeing you next week.